Hello everyone and welcome to the game that just ended. It's a game from the penultimate round of the Magnus Carlsen Invitational Preliminaries. Uh, Daniel Dubov versus Magnus Carlsen. Uh, the two rivals are uh, brawling it out once again and uh, the, the, this game features a uh, most impressive style of, of play uh, but that's nothing out of the ordinary when uh, Dubov is playing uh, well either color. Uh, and of course uh, in any time format. So without further ado let's check it out as this is... Uh, th this is... Uh, uh, something else so and it's very interesting uh, that uh, going into this game Dubov uh, has six points whereas Magnus has nine and a half points so Magnus not really in any uh, danger of dropping out but Dubov uh, should should definitely try and grab as many points as possible in the next two games so Dubov with the white pieces uh, opens with d4 uh, we have d5 by Magnus c4 by Dubov and now c6 uh, going uh, for the Slav defense uh, we have knight to f3 knight to f6 and now at uh, knight to c3. Uh, we have e6 by Magnus uh, going for the semi-slav and now g3 preparing to fianchetto the light square bishop. We have knight b to d7 uh, just continuing development and the bishop to g2. Uh, we have d captures on c4. Magnus grabs a pawn here. Maybe he will uh, try and try even in the, the defend it with b5 later on and the dub of castles. And now while you can play b5 and this is definitely playable, uh, Magnus goes for a different line bishop to d6. And now uh, he asks dub of what do you play here? Uh, Dubov, a big fan of rapid development, uh, continues with bishop to g5, pins the knight here, and uh, h6. Now Magnus forces him to either move or, or capture on f6. You don't have, of course, h4 because g5 is happening. So bishop captures on f6, queen captures on f6, and now uh, there is a game where rook to c1 was played, but here uh, we have knight to d2 by Magnus, going after, uh, by Dubov going after the c4 pawn, uh, and it is as of move 10 that we have a completely new game. So let's see how Magnus deals with this. He starts with uh, knight to b6, just defending that c4 pawn, uh, and a4 now. Dubov tries to kick away the knight with a5. Magnus prevents it, he pushes a5 himself, and now knight c to e4, uh, attacking the queen queen and the bishop here. Uh, we have queen back to e7 and now uh, even b3. Uh, so what do you play here? Of course Magnus captures. We have c captures on b3. Uh, knight captures on d6 now eliminating this strong dark square bishop. Queen captures and even queen captures on b3. Dubov doesn't even try uh, and defend the d4 pawn. You could play e3, you could play knight captures on b3 to defend the pawn. But Dubov goes queen captures on b3 and he sacrifices yet another pawn. And Magnus grabs it. Queen captures on d4. And now if you do a quick count, Magnus has 7 pawns. Dubov has uh, 5. And uh, the, the good question is, uh, where's the Dubov's compensation? Uh, does he have some sort of an attack? Does he have some uh, huge lead in development? And he kind of does. Uh, Magnus uh, has this weird knight on b6, but it's coming to d5, so it's not a problem. Uh, one thing you have to... Uh, be careful of is how are you going to develop your light square bishop and if you can't develop the light square bishop you can't uh, very well uh, bring the rook into the game. Uh, so here rook f to d1 by Dubov. Now preparing some nasty discoveries after the knight moves uh, but there aren't uh, any that are all that nasty so first uh, we have just castles by Magnus. Uh, rook a to b1 now putting pressure on the knight but just knight to d5 as planned and now uh, knight to c4 and Dubov has a very firm grip on the position if that uh, knight uh, comes to comes to b6 you can completely uh, bl blockade the position uh, the light square bishop will not be able to enter the game uh, the, the rooks will not uh, be able to connect and it's going to be very hard for Magnus to play this so instead we have queen to c3 and Magnus immediately offers a queen trade and now e4 by Dubov uh, we have queen captures on b3, rook captures on b3, and now knight to b4. Magnus cuts off the rook's influence on the b-file, and Dubov advances this pawn to e5, uh, which means this bishop now comes alive, and these pawns are locked in on light squares, so uh, you want to keep this light square bishop locked in. And uh, it seems like uh, you, you might think, wow, Dubov is really playing some really, really insane, uh, impressive chess, because there is that uh, one alpha zero game, if you guys remember it, we covered it on the channel, where... Uh, Alpha Zero sacrificed uh, two pawns uh, against Stockfish. Stockfish was playing the Queen's Indian defense uh, and completely locked in this light square bishop. Stockfish was helpless and in the end Alpha Zero just uh, crushed him. Uh, but here uh, Dubov actually has only six minutes on the clock, some six minutes and 20 seconds, whereas Magnus has almost 13 minutes on the clock. So 
it, it doesn't seem like Magnus is struggling all that much with uh, with this position, and it's, it seems like he knows what he's doing. So here uh, we have knight to d5, bringing the knight back to this excellent square, and now f4 by Dubov. Now getting this uh, very nice pawn chain here, uh, but now b5, and this is the move that Magnus planned out. Uh, he sacrifices the pawn back to open up the position, as now his bishop can come alive. And it also comes with a little tactic, because if pawn captures pawn captures, which was played in the game, uh, there is the option of rook captures on b5, but Dubov doesn't go for this, uh, even though uh, you could, but uh, it's uh, it's very dangerous. For example, rook captures on b5, uh, bishop to a6 now with an attack on the rook and the knight, and now you sacrifice the exchange. Rook captures, we have e captures on d5, and now you pick up the a5 pawn. So Dubov could get this position in, uh, but he's never grabbing this pawn, because after the bishop moves, the knight is under attack, and now you have to play something, knight b3 or b7, probably b7, and then you... Uh, defended the pawn like this and uh, now the game could continue for example bishop captures bishop captures rook captures but now rook f to b8 and uh, it's a very very uh, tough position to play for white white will be up a pawn uh, but still the the rook pair here uh, will simply be too strong so well this is a, a one possibility dubov of, of course avoids this he plays bishop captures on d5 and now we have e captures on d5 uh, sorry, e captures on d5, grabbing back the, the piece. We have knight to b6 now, uh, and here we have rook to a6. Again, uh, this was one moment where Magnus could have played bishop to g4, and this is a very scary move to face uh, because uh, the, the rook is under attack. And after rook captures on d5, Magnus just continues pushing a4 now, attacking the rook on b3, and after you grab this pawn, for example, now you play rook to a6, and you don't really have a, a good way of dealing with this. The pawn is marching down the board, the other rook is coming to b8, and there, there, there's really nothing to do. If rook to b1, uh, this rook cannot go back, the bishop covers the d1 square. So you, you could play something like this, but then rook to b8, and this will be too much to handle. If rook d to b5, defending just a3, and then a2, and that's, that's game. So this is one way to do it for Magnus, but he plays rook to a6, and now uh, Dubov gets uh, a new, new wind uh, here in his back. We have knight captures, rook captures, and now rook captures on b5. So this is what Magnus wanted. He wanted to give back some material so he can start pushing his pass pawn. So a4, and now rook d captures, uh, rook b, uh, rook d captures uh, on d5, grabbing that pawn. Uh, we have a3 here, Magnus continues pushing, uh, and now rook to a5. Dubov cuts off uh, Carlson's rook here, and uh, it's a very, very tricky position. Uh, there is only one good move here for Magnus, so feel free to pause the video here and try to find this only good move uh, while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on not playing rook c to c6. Uh, and for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, the move is actually rook a to a8. So this is what you have to do, uh, because after this move, now you're just, uh, yeah, well, you're, you're just basically winning. There's not much you can do. The pawn is marching forward. Uh, and for example, if let's say captures, captures, there is no stopping this pawn. Rook d1, a2, rook a1. Okay, you can't stop it. But now the rook is stuck on a1 and the black is uh, free to just bring the king into the game and the rook will, for example, come to a3, completely cut off the white king and it's it's a winning endgame. Uh, but here, after rook to a5, Magnus went to rook c to c6, uh, but now it's a bit different because Dubov finds a, a, a beautiful uh, move that, that saves him and that's rook to d8 with check. We have king to h7 and now rook to a8. So this is how Dubov tricks Magnus. Uh, we have rook captures on a8, rook captures now attacking the a3 pawn, and first rook to c1 with check. King g2, and now rook to c2 with check. King f3, and only now a2. So uh, for the moment you don't have to worry because there's no way for the rook to reach the back rank to defend the queening square, uh, but Magnus will need to keep the rook there in order to, to defend the passed pawn. So here uh, we have f5, not worrying about the h2 pawn, Dubo wants to play e6 and create a passed pawn of his own. So rook captures on h2, and now e6, Dubov creates a pass pawn, uh, we have f captures, f captures, and now rook to h1. Uh, this is a necessity uh, by Magnus, uh, because if you do nothing, then the pawn is just queening, you don't have rook to e2, because the king covers that, so uh, Magnus needs to part with the a2 pawn, and he plays it, rook to h1, 
uh, we have rook captures on uh, a2 and now rook to e1, putting the rook behind the pass pawn and now rook to a6, defending. Uh, we have king to g6 and now we have g4. Uh, you could try this check, but it doesn't really do anything. Just king to f7 and the pawn is now uh, attacked twice, so that doesn't really work. So after king to g6, we have g4 by Dubov, uh, and now king to f6, going after the pawn here. King to g3, and now rook to e3 with check. King f2, and only now rook captures on, uh, on e6. And now, well, you could play this position in a lot of very different ways. Uh, Dubov finds, the, of course, the, the fanciest way to continue, and that is g5 with check. Of course, the king cannot capture because you lose the rook, so you have to double your pawns. And now h captures on g5, we get this position where uh, black has doubled pawns uh, and uh, white will, of course, try try and hold this. Uh, even though black is up two pawns, uh, you can even though the pawns are doubled, you cannot trade. If you trade, the position is winning for black, just in case you were wondering. Uh, so rook to a2, uh, and now we continue. King f5, we have king f3. Uh, gaining the opposition, g4 check, we have king to g3. Uh, rook to e3 with check, king to f2. We have rook to f3 with check, king g2, and now king to g5. Uh, rook to a8, uh, and now rook to b3. Uh, we have rook to a2, again preventing any checks on the second rank, king to h4 now. Uh, rook to c2, uh, and now rook to b8. Uh, Dubov just waits, uh, he has to wait for Magnus to push all of uh, all of his pawns uh, upwards, and then he's gonna create some sort of a stalemating pattern or, or whatnot. Uh, so here, rook back to a2, he's just repeating moves, and rook to c8. So Magnus would probably agree to a draw, of course Magnus realizes that Dubov knows this is a draw. The problem is, uh, Magnus has uh, 15 minutes on the clock, whereas Dubov has only 30 seconds on the clock. And maybe, who knows, uh, with 30 seconds on the clock anything can happen, like you could... Uh, you could, uh, you know, do a mouse slip. You could, uh, you know, uh, forget about the time. You could, uh, you could get disconnected, uh, maybe even for a few seconds, and that's gonna be a lot since you only have 30 seconds. So uh, it, uh, you know, definitely pays to to try. So here, rook back to b2 and rook to a8. Now we have rook to c2, just waiting to see what happens. Rook to a4. Now we have rook to b2, and now g3. Finally, a pawn move. We have rook to c2, and now rook to f4. Uh, we have rook to c7, going after the pawn here, and now rook to f2 check. It's not a problem, king g1, and now g6 by Magnus. Uh, we have rook to c6, again going after the pawn g5, and now rook to h6 with check. Uh, we have king to g4 here, and rook back to h8. So uh, the king is cut off from uh, from reaching the, the h file. We have rook to e2, and now rook back to a8. Uh, we have rook to e4, and now king to g2 gaining the opposition you don't want the king getting any closer so rook to f4 and now king back to g1 we have rook to f2 and again rook to a7 just wasting a move uh, we have rook to e2 that's not e2 rook to e2 and now rook back to a8 we have g2 finally the pawn reaches this square uh, and now rook to a3 cutting off the black king from uh, reaching deeper into the position we have king f4 and now rook to b3 keeping control of the third rank and now rook to e3 magnus finally offers a rook trade and the problem here is uh you might be thinking why not something like g4 g3 and then we hide the, the king on h3 and while that is a valid idea uh, it's only a valid as an idea because white would just waste a move after g3 uh, white would win that pawn rook captures on g3 and you cannot recapture because it's stalemate the white king now has no move so that's basically uh, the idea or, or rather the the trick behind how you how you uh, not lose this position. So rook to e3, Magnus goes uh, about it like this. We have rook captures, king captures, and now king captures on g2. And now Magnus is up a pawn, uh, but uh, it is a position that, uh, it, well, does not allow black to push for more than a draw. So king f4, Magnus will, of course, try. Dubov is very low on time, but it's also fun to, you know, play the game uh, up uh, out until the last possible move. G4, we have king g2, g3, king g1, king to g4, now king g2 again grabbing opposition, king h4, king g2, uh, uh, king g2, not king h1, <laughs> uh, king h3, and now king to h1, again grabbing opposition, g2 check, king g1, and after king to g3, uh, this is now, of course, stalemate, and the game ends in a draw in some 77 moves. So really, uh, uh, a really uh, feisty game, uh, Dubov uh, played in great style, again, uh, right from the beginning, the, the game definitely reminded me of that uh, one game uh, Alpha Zero played against Stockfish, where... 
uh, the, the entire queen side was just completely cut off but Magnus obviously saw that game and he decided to give back the B pawn to, to activate his pieces so uh, the, 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 there you have it that's how you that's how you play and the, the, if not for that move it'd be it would be uh, uh, impossible to play because the white would simply grab too much space so with this b5 uh with this uh, b5 idea let me just uh, uh rewind that a little bit yeah here uh, with this b5 idea such a such a strong move such an impressive move uh that shows uh, that even though you're up two points you don't need two points you need to give back the pawn activate the pieces and then enjoy your extra pass pawn uh, that you know should have won the game but uh, I, I think Magnus wasn't all that much into this game because he's already leading uh, by by you know a, a huge margin uh, and he's qualifying into the the main event without uh, any problems so uh, I guess his heart just wasn't in this one uh, but it also shows you what uh, what it means to play against someone who plays as aggressive and as complex uh, as Daniel Dubov here uh, so uh, that's the game. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Could have ended, uh, you know, uh, any in any uh, way possible, but in the end, in the end, in a draw. Uh, so ho hope you enjoyed this one. Uh, I would like to thank Henry Alme, Scott Mellis, Lokas Teokaris, Dale Lear, and Veselin Velchikov for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. Uh, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Th uh, and uh, yeah, thank you all for watching. Uh, I will see you soon uh, with some uh, with some more of of the good stuff from this tournament. Uh, see you soon.